take my opportunity to say my greeting. Hello, everybody. Good early morning to our friends in North and South America. Good afternoon. To our friends in the UK, Europe. Good early evening to our friends in the Arab states. Good evening to our friends in India, Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia. Good late evening to our friend in Australia. I hope you are well. Nice to see your faces again. We had a busy time at the monastery getting the building ready in time for the Katina ceremony, a lot of the cleaning up and all those things, and then arranging the Katina ceremony, greeting our guests, receiving our guests. And in about a week or so, I will be heading off to Bodh Gaya for another meditation marathon. So sometimes in life, it's good to have a bit of a breathing out. We may have to, we do have to make strenuous good efforts. We also need to know a little bit about pacing. So I, uh, it's also nice to sometimes do something different. We can get a bit, if we feel sometimes life, we get stuck in ruts or there's certain duties that we have to do. It gets, it, one can get bored, one can get resentful. Oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. I have, and so sometimes it's nice to take on a new activity, uh, keep the mind uh, interested. Of course, it's a bit, one has to be careful trying to practice a middle way, not becoming too obsessed with uh, things. But something I've been doing recently is uh, I've taken up a hobby of doing water paintings of lotus. And this is uh, interesting. It's interesting in as much as I've had this occasional thought probably for about five, six, seven years that one day I want to be able to paint lotuses. <laughs> and I've been, you know, busy with uh, building a monastery and my meditation practice and establishing a website and writing books and various things that one does to uh, deepen one's practice and share Dhamma with others, encourage others. But uh, I finally had that sense of now might be the right time. It might also be part of getting older. I turned 50 back in June, and uh, maybe it's uh, one of those things when you're getting older, you develop more interest in these genteel kind of uh, <laughs> staying at home hobbies. So I, but with any kind of hobby, because I have been a monk for 26 years, I think it's important to uh, stay within parameters. You know, you don't want to. And so there's the question, isn't it? Should one do oil painting? Should one do acrylic? Should one do? And so I, I decided that I would just do water color paintings. And I decided that I would just do lotuses. And uh, there's a reason for this. My, my experience as a meditator and as a meditation teacher is that focusing on one thing consistently for a period of time is going to get the best results. So I'm going to describe a little bit of my process of, I'm going to title this little reflection, The Zen of Painting Lotuses. So. <laughs> I'm, probably not all of you have artistic temperaments. No, I'm not going to say I have an artistic temperament. That sounds a bit, I'm going to say I have artistic sensibilities. <laughs> which is much better than having an artistic temperament. I love those two words together, artistic and sensible. So I try to have artistic sensibilities. <laughs> and so I'm going to try to keep my artful activities within skillful parameters. So, but also in, in really taking something on, if we are going to do something, we should do it properly. That's something that I believe that uh, if you're going to do something, do it properly in a way where you are cultivating, hopefully, 
some skillful qualities such as an ability to focus, an ability to apply attention in a particular way for a period of time, and an ability to stick at something until you develop some skills. So when we look at the four bases of success, this uh, chanda, virya, chitta, vimanksa, aspiration, then the effort, then the applying the factors of mind, and then reviewing how's it going, making adjustments. So I made the decision that I would paint 15 lotus in 15 days. Actually, I first decided I would do one a week, but I realized that, that that's not really going to work. If you want to develop <clears throat> skills in anything, you kind of, you have to immerse yourself a little bit, sincerely, not too much. But, so I put aside, I set aside two to three hours a day for 15 days and this is kind of in a way it's cathartic it's like just me hanging out in my office and not not having to be with hundreds of people and dust and bricks and just uh, enjoying paper color brush and uh, learning about paper colors brush so this is literally my very first water paintings ever and so i'm before i'm, gonna, I'm actually going to show you some of the pictures of what i painted and before I show you, I would like I'll be modest and humble and, and state that I'm not uh, proclaiming that I'm any kind of master painter. I, I think someone, I heard it said somewhere that to master anything takes about 10,000 hours. So I'm 45 hours into my 10,000 hour process. And uh, what's nice about it, what's nice about knowing that it's going to take a long time to become really good at something is it kind of affects the fault finding mind in a nice way. It's like when I look at the paintings and I see what isn't so good about it yet, there isn't this part of myself which is beating myself up and thinking that I should do better. And I, I, wanted, I wanted to talk about this a bit because I think this is really important for all of us, the way that we, the way that we apply critical attention and how much heaviness there is around it. And because we do this in our practice, so I wanted to talk, I wanted to make a parallel between this. And the, it's often, they talk about the beginner's mind, right? To try to have the beginner's mind. So coming with not too much expectation, coming with not too much judgment, coming with an interest, and then also a commitment. I'm just going to keep doing this no matter how long it takes. And so if it's going to take 10,000 hours to master something, and I'm about, 50 hours into what's that what I don't even know what percentage but it's a small 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 percentage of uh, one tenth of, less than one tenth of one percent so it's like stepping out on a long journey 10,000 miles and uh, it's it's just like oh, okay so be interested there's going to be some interesting trees interesting flowers there's going to be some nice views vistas there's going to be some dark valleys there's going to be some storms and, and just being interested in the journey and taking one step at a time. And so, uh, yeah, so JC, please bring up Lotus number one, Pajanach <laughs> Lotus, first water painting. There we go. So this is a blue Lotus and uh, it was based on a photograph. And in all fairness, it doesn't look much like the photograph, <laughs> but this is my first attempt. And when I look at that, I can see the shading's a bit heavy. The perspective isn't quite right, but they're nice colors. It's a nice shape. And so uh, Lotus number two, please, JC. Lotus number two, we see the shading is getting a little bit lighter and uh, still, a bit, uh, still a bit clumsy, a bit heavy, and that's okay. So in, in undertaking this process, one is learning about the paint, the paper, the brush, the strokes, the shading, how to make things look darker, how to make things look lighter, how to make things look a bit real. Third one, please, JC. Now, I don't, I, I have to say, I don't like this picture. But what's interesting about it is in doing this particular lotus, lotus number three, painting number three, I learned about just how light you can make a color 
like just how much water you can put in watercolor and how light you can paint to get a translucent effect. And I also learned about how you can make an edge by kind of moving the brush up and down and up and down towards the edge. And so what I was talking about is the fault finding mind. Like I look at that and I don't really like it because I can see those petals in the back shouldn't be so dark. The ones in the front should be dark. The ones in the front, the back should be lighter. There's a couple of petals in the back which are too big. The pistols in the middle, they're too bunched together. So I was like looking at this after my two and a half hours and I'm like, okay, so let's do it again. Lotus number four, please, they said. And I'm, I'm quite, I, I like this one. And I just, I just wanted to make the point, like if you, for me, I, like I said, I'm no master, I'm no expert, I'm beginning. But when I look at painting number three, it looks maybe like a nine or a 10 year old did it. And when I look at Lotus number four, that looks to me as though someone who has some skill in painting watercolors, perhaps some years of experience did that one. And it's literally one after the other. And the reason I think that kind of progress was possible was the capacity to see what wasn't working, what I didn't like, and try again, and try to make it better. Just noticing where should the darkness be? How should it be to have more perspective? And I found a, I found a different picture, which was kind of more, probably more easy to paint because it was obvious that uh, light was shining from behind and the front part was darker. So, okay, well, I can use that picture where it became obvious. So this is probably my favorite of the, I actually painted 16 lotuses instead of 15, but I did fulfill my commitment. But yeah, so if I'd given up at lotus number three, no, the perspective is wrong, the shading is wrong, it doesn't look real, this is too hard, right? That's the kind of thing we can do in our practice. But then when we look at things like, mm, okay, so tweak it, try to make it, try to make it better, try again. And so we often have that experience, don't we, in meditation retreats where every now and then we have a really nice sit. And then you can come to the, the next day or the next, oh, and all the hindrances are back. You know, it's like, but in general, in practice, if we keep up consistently, the, the peacefulness gets better over a period of time. But when we do have those nice experiences, a bit more clarity, a bit more insight, a bit more spaciousness, it's a, we take that as encouragement. This is where it's going. This is what's possible. So next lotus, please, JP. So this was, I was experimenting with no sketch. I didn't draw any, I just looking at a picture and I just painted this without uh, drawing, drawing a sketch first, because I also, I want eventually to be able to just pick up a brush and paint a lotus without, uh, without having a picture or without having a sketch. So it's just experimenting. This is my first attempt at uh, free flowing lotus painting. I guess this is a water lily. And uh, once again, I wasn't so pleased with it. Oh, it's a bit too small. It doesn't really look real. So I tried harder. Next picture, please, JP. And then I was, I like this one. I like this one better. So, okay, that uh, the green part looks like leaves and petals look more like petals and uh, bigger with more of an impression. So I decided to, to paint some purple lotus, some purple water lilies, some pink lotuses, some yellow water lilies, and some blue lotuses. And, uh, and I gave them different interesting names to keep, to keep myself a little bit interested. So <laughs> this is the Arya Rasami, the aura of the noble ones. And uh, next picture, please, JP. Again, another attempt at a blue lotus. I quite liked the sense of uh, just like if it, having a front and a back, having a depth but I felt the shading was a bit heavy, a bit heavy handed. I'm just learning how to use the brushes. So the next painting, please. This was experimenting with just how light can you, and just how little shading can you, can you use to uh, capture a flower-like feeling. So I suppose this is more of a iconic or a symbolic lotus. And uh, you know, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Like I'm gonna paint lotuses with water colors and there's so much options, just keeping it that simple. There are so many options. It's like Chinese style, Japanese style, calligraphy style, modern style. And uh, so yes, 
there's plenty of uh, room for proliferation within that one, <laughs> within that one a simple theme. And uh, this is called transparent truth. This is my uh, blue trans high opaque collection. Next picture, please. So yes, I was, I'm still working on my, this is the Paduma Metta, the Lotus of Metta, the second attempt of it, another one of those pink lotuses and practicing a bit more shading and uh, those little lines that you see on, on lotuses. Next picture, please. Again, a, a bit more modern, a bit more kind of symbolic, a bit more transparency. And then what's interesting also about lotuses is where are you going to look at it from? If you're going to look at it from a meter, the more kind of classic, with a lot of detail looks very nice. But this one actually looks really nice from four meters away. If you're looking at it on a wall at four meters, you can see a flower and uh, with a front and a back, and it's quite nice. Next one, please. Yeah, I wasn't so pleased with this. I find the yellow is quite difficult to work with. You can't get the same variation in color. To me, this looks a bit like an artichoke. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried, right? Or it was a bit like a banana, a little bit like a, a fusion between a lotus and artichoke and a banana. And, uh, <laughs> but once again, I, this one took the longest. This took four and a half hours. And at the end of it, I don't like it. And that's okay. It's okay. The next one, another modern transparent. This is not a fully blossomed lotus. This is a, uh, budding and opening lotus in the transparent truth collection. I like this one. It looks again. It looks nice from three meters. Next one. So yeah, when you, I keep trying to get the shading, to get the dimensions, and I feel that it's getting better. This is painting number thirteen, day thirteen, painting number thirteen. Next one, please. So here I started to get a bit more, I guess, new agey, uh, symbolic, iconic, enjoying this kind of translucency of water paint and the lovely texture of the paper. Next one, please, Jason. So I was more, I was more happy with these colors. And so this does have a symbolic meaning. You'll notice that there's seven petals and that's, seven factors of enlightenment. And you'll notice that it goes from jade green to aquamarine, turquoise to lapis, and then to purple. This is actually the color of the chakras, the uh, chakras from the heart, throat, forehead and crown. And the symbol in the middle is actually the symbol for Buddha in Thai iconography which means enlightenment. So the seven factors of enlight enlightenment leading to enlightenment. Last one. So this was I did just last night and it's actually painting number 16. And I'm beginning to be pleased because to me, it looks like a flower. It has a front, it has a back. It has that nice softness and uh, yeah. One of the reasons the tips are red is because I, I wanted to make it intense color and I actually don't yet have the color pink in my palette. I just have red. So uh, the pink part is watered down red. The tips are probably slightly too red, but I will get some, I'll get some pink paint at some stage. And then I'll... Anyway, if JC, if you could flick between picture one, picture two, picture two, yeah. Yep, and then go to the last one again, picture 16. Yeah, so I think we can see some progress in my journey through the valleys, mountains, vistas, and plateaus of water paintings. <laughs> we traveled one mile in the 10,000 miles. And uh, so it's, it's uh, sometimes nice to just find ways to relax. I, it's when you come to this kind of discipline, I find I'm enjoying bringing the discipline that I've cultivated as being a monk for 26 years to a new, a new medium where I sit at my desk with this paper, this water paint, 
and I know I'm going to be there for three hours. And I just sketch it. I put the first layer of paint. I begin shading it, and I keep working on it until it becomes a flower. And uh, of course, I'm putting it down now. That that has been my little creative uh, cathartic respite, and I will be heading off to Bodh Gaya, where I'll be picking up my 10 hours a day of meditation again. But it is important, I think, uh, well, I think I've made the point already, but we do need to make heroic effort. We do need to practice quite hard if we want results in our practice. And we also need to learn about pacing and balancing and uh, nourishing, nourishing the heart and uh, to sustain our efforts. So, I hope that the Zen of painting lotuses was helpful to some of you. And now I believe that we have some. Also, I'd like to encourage you, if anyone else has a spare time, <laughs> enough spare time to spend hours painting lotuses, uh, please also take on this practice. And uh, I think, Joyce, you have one to show us, don't you? And let me, let me preface this by mentioning that Auntie Joyce did do a once a week for six months water painting training 10 years ago. So she's not an absolute beginner. She's an old hand. Joyce, Auntie Joyce, show us your lotus. Suai. In Thai, we say suai, which means beautiful. Yeah. I'm not an old hand. It's ten years ago, Prajan. And this yeah, took that, me. That's what being doing it ten years ago is. What makes you an old hand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took me almost what couple of days just on the sketch. Yeah, five uh, times drawing the sketch. Yeah, five attempts, and I think this is my third attempt. But this is um, the third attempt of painting, is it? Yeah, I, sh I showed this afternoon, but it was like halfway through. I was yeah. just trying to put in the shading. Um, well, I think it's very lovely. Yeah, I'm not quite there yet. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I'll catch up with you. I'll try to catch up with you when you're in Bogaya for six weeks. Yeah, you'll overtake me, I'm sure. But I'll be doing more <laughs> meditation. <so. laughs> it's very meditative as, as well. And um, it, it is. You have to, when you're doing, this is something interesting as well, is when you do something new, you have to pay attention. So it forces you to be with the activity in the body in the moment. And I already have a suspicion that once I'm about a hundred hours into this, it'll be a bit like driving a car. You'll be able to do it and think about other things. And uh, that would be a bit of a shame, but um, <laughs> anyway, I enjoy the being present and the peacefulness as long as it lasts. So. Yeah. Well, we have, <laughs> we have some questions, I think, Prajan. Yes, and a bit of healthy competition is fine. I don't mind if your lotus becomes more beautiful than mine, Joyce. I will rejoice. Uh, that would take a long time, Prajan, I'm quite sure. That one's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have lotus potential. <laughs> I like lotus. I like flowers, but not the landscaping. Joyce is famous in Malaysia for doing flower arrangements at various meditation centers. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> JC, we have a question. So JC, are you going to show us your painting of your lotus? JC did a lotus painting in the in the lockdowns. Come on, bring it up. Lotus time. <laughs> I threw it away. I left it in Singapore. But you have a picture. Yeah, I have a picture. I will pull it up. Why later. did you throw it away? I cannot carry it back. And I... <laughs> your Ajahn's so, taught you to put things down. To let go. Yeah. And I can I think I can draw the nicer one in the future. No worries. <laughs> yes, I would I would like to see. I would like I'm quite happy if people compare lotuses. You got your picture ready to show us? I thought it was pretty good. Just one more lotus, people. And then we'll get into the Dharma discussion.
Rajan, while JC is trying to retrieve his lotus. Yes. Let me just uh, allow me, please, to share my experience on my first uh, painting after 10 years. Yes, go for it. All right. You know, when you get, uh, it's very much like a starting a meditation practice. I kind of like relate that to a meditation practice and kind of reflection. That if you, the foundation is so strong and if you use the wrong brush and if you use the wrong paper yeah. and if you are not aware that you're using all the wrong stuff, then you're definitely got, not going anywhere. It's going to get much longer. But if somebody can paint, can point it out to you that you're using not the right paper or not the right brush, um, you kind of like, oh, okay. You, you kind of like see see the way, uh, the right way to do the right thing. And I think uh, this com the conversation that we had this afternoon was pretty good because I keep telling you I've got the wrong brush. I didn't get the right paper, uh, you know. And um, But then it, it did turn out quite all right, but then it was not like what I, I, I was looking forward to. So it's the same thing like meditation when you get stuck in a meditation practice you you are desire to have certain um certain picture certain level or whatever you call it you know and when you don't get it and you don't even know where you go wrong that's when you get really stuck for good so i i, I, I think it looks fine but this is a thing the four foundations yeah. of success the four basics of the idipada the aspiration the applying the effort applying the mind factors and then the reviewing how's it going and when we do that we try not to we we have to be able to see what isn't quite perfect yet without a lot of heavy judgment because the aversion hindrance is a hindrance it's unwholesome so and this is a really this is a really important area where we need to learn and this is what water painting is interesting because you need to learn about having a gentle hand and a gentle stroke because you can't just layer more and more layers on top of it like you can with acrylic or oil and you can't scrape it back. You, you need to know, you need to learn how to delicately stroke. And uh, with the fault finding mind, we need to learn that. We need to learn delicate strokes of fault mind, fault finding. And uh, so I think reviewing it, it's like, yeah, it's pretty good. The sketch is good. The coloring is nice. And it would be nicer with the right paper and the right brush. So you get the right paper and you get the right brush and you keep going and it gets better. So, uh, who? It's JC's Lotus. I reckon that's pretty good. It's good from maybe 10 meters. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like, a, who are those guys? Monet, one of okay. Monet's Lotuses. I've seen Monet in the British gallery, so I know all about Monet. <laughs> because I saw one painting in the British gallery once. And I think it looks pretty nice, especially the pistols. You did a good job. Very good, Braja. Not what only do you very think, nice. Rajita? Oh. You're an artist. What do you think of JC's Lotus? Yeah, thumb up. So please, JC, we want to see more lotuses from you. Right. 